And it's the 5th of September. Johnny has been making so much noise because it's his birthday. And see his oh face boy. all splashed up behind <laughs> us. But we'd like to say happy birthday to you, Johnny. Thank it's you, been man. fun knowing you, you. And God bless you. Stay blessed. Thank but happy, happy, happy Thank birthday. You. Today, <laughs> our ears were all spoiled. Do you know, anyway, do you know my mobile money number? Oh, no, please. <laughs> you don't even want to know. <laughs> But you Man, know how we right. do it here at yeah, General. Know, yeah. The party is on you, the unfortunately. Party, yeah, so. I see. Unfortunately. So what yeah, I've decided I mean. to do is to uh, distribute Bible tracts and convert as many people. On this day. Yeah. Right. You, know, right, but you know. You can do that. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. That's, I mean, like on the side. Yeah. But the food must come, whether you like so it or not. So I'll lay a buffet table, have Bible tracts on it. So when Beautiful. you fire pass, you pick, you pick one. Grab. Great. Then I, awesome. I bless you. It's a party. Mm -hmm. And you're blessing God's kingdom. Yeah. Well done. We I'm bless a, you. I'm a, don't blame the man. The, the man's pocket. It's dry. I'm not. Oh. Uh, but right, it's the first few days of the be. month. So okay, his salary from last month should carry him. It's there. You see, the point is, I decide that I own to bless the people That's right. and I'm get happy. people mm. to the kingdom of God. Okay. You know, populate the yeah, kingdom and depopulate hell. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, God will be happy with yeah. you. Today's blessings yeah. will be extra. People <laughs> should know and learn about God, read about the goodness of God on my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> you do as long as we'll get you. <laughs> All right. Good morning once again. Well, I don't know. Uh, Wednesday morning. Mm. Well, some showers around uh, Yeah. 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 Almost, uh, yeah. 5 a.m. Yeah. Uh, so showers of blessings yeah. for me. So. And of course, if you're celebrating your birthday with Johnny, mm. happy birthday yeah. to be good to someone around you. That's what birthday is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure Johnny will be good to all of you in the course of the day. Good morning. The team is ready. From now till 9 a.m., our job is to get you excited and get you to be out and be productive. We know that it's raining, mm -hmm. it's drizzling. Uh, we're told that in some parts of Accra, you don't step out when it's drizzling. Right. You've got to be careful uh, if you're driving. The mm -hmm. roads, the streets are wet. Mm -hmm. And be careful wherever you are. Make sure the kids are properly clothed when you're going to work, at school, I mean, and yourself be safe on the road to work. Good morning once again. We're ready. Mm -hmm. Jody yeah. and Amma. Absolutely. George we are, we are, we're ready. George is joining us. George, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I know you have special wishes right. for Jody. 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 You don't. Breakfast, lunch. And supper. Hey. Why? Supper, I'll be in the house. No, so breakfast <laughs> and lunch on you. Oh, it's right. sounding as if I'm the school <laughs> no, feeding you program you coordinator. Should do something. <laughs> do I look like the school feeding program coordinator? You are birthday coordinator. That is standard here. The birthday coordinator is Etanam Singh. Mm. Oh, okay. now. Yeah. I'm right. sure she'd want you to do something for us. But she has also, you see, this is my first birthday after I got married, so I'm taking advice from my wife. Yeah. She said I should bring see. people to God. Yeah. Okay. All right. We already know <laughs> God. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> But if I get any gifts, I'll share with you. Okay. Great. Yeah, fine. Then we have to appeal for, you know, viewers to bring you yeah, the gifts I mean, so that they it bring will overflow. Yeah, for one. Because what? No, 72. 72. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. How can you, you be older young. than Grandpa here? He's very young. How can you be older than Grandpa? I'm using your <laughs> more. I'm, I'm using your more on my head. <laughs> All right. <laughs> your more users okay. will not be happy with you for giving out their secrets this morning. But George, you've got all the news sure, sure. for us. News is up next, just it. I'm George Quinn and this is news here on New Day. We are live on DSTV channel 279. And on to our very first story. More than 12,000 workers have lost their jobs between 2015 and August 2018 in the private sector, according to media reports. And these figures appear to be only a fraction of what is yet to unfold, despite government tout in the private sector as the engine of the country's growth. Many job losses in the past three years was blamed on the power crisis and a business environment many described as not conducive. But two years on, with the power crisis seemingly a thing of the past, and a government with ideology of promoting businesses, it hasn't gotten any better. In his address on May Day, President Ekufuado promised the reduction in electricity tariffs as a major plank in this policy and the effect should be visible soon in an improvement in the cost of doing business and confidence in the economy as a whole, saying, as these reforms and changes work their way through the system, I am certain that we should very soon be seeing a vigorous turnaround in the creation of jobs in the private sector. Ironically, however, some 12,000 jobs are reported to have been lost 
in the formal sector between 2016 and 2018. A figure obviously exacerbated by the turmoil in the banking sector, where over 3,000 jobs have been lost, with the number expected to increase as the central bank takes its supervisory role more seriously and more banks predicted to go down, a newly formed consolidated bank expected to shed more of its unrequired adopted staff. The job losses in the financial sector alone over the past three years is staggering if one should add those of the microfinance and savings and loans companies that went bust for various reasons. The job losses, some experts argue, could still be laid at the doorsteps of the Dumso era that caused businesses not breaking even and layoffs that may have affected consumer indexes. TV3 analysis of media reported job losses in the formal sector alone stands at some 12,550. How that plays on the national figure and ratio of unemployment will be hard to tell in a country where the release of statistics could delay by at least two years. Though not a direct response to these job losses, the government of the day will argue jobs equally created outweigh the job losses. According to the president, some 33,160 teachers were employed, with some 8,000 more announced to be employed for the second year of free SHS policy. 16,500 health workers employed, with 32,000 more to be employed. Again, some 500,000 farmers to be engaged under the planting for food and jobs policy in 2018, after some 200,000 engaged in 2017, and an expected 100,000 target for the Nation Builders Corps. Impressive numbers that far outweigh the shock one could expect from the layoffs in the private sector. But the question is, will the government continue to be the biggest employer while paying lip service to a vibrant employing private sector? And still on this development, our reporter Richard Bright Addo has been finding out some reasons attributed to the job losses. An economist, Dr. Lord Mensah, attributed the trend to hostile methodology used by government in cleansing the banking sector. If you don't have a strong financial space, who is going to provide funds to the banks? And who is the fund will be lent to which company? So obviously companies are not going to get money to expand. In the end, you're going to realize a situation where, I mean, we are not expanding, so what do we do? The only way we can keep our cost, you know, down is to make sure that we lay off and keep the size that, you know, we think we can manage. So these things are not surprising because the growth that we've been realizing are not, you know, inclusive growth. But a former Deputy Minister of Employment and Labor Relations under the Mahama administration, Baba Jamal, says the problem is as a result of the wrong impression the then opposition NPP created about the economy. Some people gave some wrong impressions that they were the masters of the game and that when they come, Ghana will be transformed in 80 months. Now they are in charge. They've lost it. They've lost completely hold on the economy. That prophet Baumia, who used to be uh, chastising the Mahama and saying all sorts of things, has now virtually <laughs> lost his voice. A labor expert, Ben Arthur, has warned that more layoffs are expected and encouraged employees to look for alternative means of livelihood. There is also a change in the way and manner people are hired. The age where you were hired at the age of 24 and you only go on retirement when you turn 60. These days are over. Casualization and seasonal work, contract work is the order of the day. This year, government plans to create 100,000 jobs through the Nation Builders Corps, but whether this is enough to close the unemployment deficit is something many citizens are closely monitoring. 
And away from the job losses, a former minister under the Jerry Rawlings administration, Kojo Yanka, is facing a barrage of attacks from John Mahama supporters on social media. Kojo Yanka, who is also the founder of the African University College of Communications, AUCC, is an, in an early open letter admonished former President John Romani Mahama to honorably buy, bow out from politics as a statesman. It the former Minister of State under Jerry John Rawlings expressed his admiration for the former president, urging him to give a careful thought to his decision to contest the flag bearership slot of the NDC. His comments suggest the former president should gracefully bow out of politics as a respected statesman. But this did not go down well with supporters of the former president. Hours after Kwejo Yanke's admonition, Many of them have taken to social media, especially Facebook, to puke and punch holes in his argument. Some suggested his admonition was unsolicited and unwelcomed. Peter Banfo, a former presidential staffer under the John Mahama administration, mounted a strong defense against his former boss. He was among the many who threw jabs at the educationist. He wrote on his Facebook page that, quote, Kwajo Yanka himself acknowledges that his opinion, as captured in that write-up, is not solicited. He suggested that the AUCC founder, quote, keeps his advice and tell Ghanaians about what he thinks about this government going for loans with 100 years repayment. A member of the legal team of the NDC, Eluji Tamaklo, also on his Facebook wall, insisted the comments from Mr. Yanka was unsolicited. But here you can join us uh, with the comments on our social media platforms on Facebook is News on TV3 and on Twitter is a News TV3. And Senior Minister Yawasa Fumafu says he's confident that the Ghana-China bauxite deal will accelerate the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. He was speaking at the opening of the Ghana Economic Forum in Accra yesterday. Government has concluded the $2 billion US dollar bauxite deal with Sino Hydro Group Limited after a meeting between President Kufuado and China's President Xi Jinping in Beijing over the weekend. The deal will involve alumina processed from bauxite deposits in the country for a $2 billion facility from Sino Hydro Group Limited for infrastructural development. At the opening of the Ghana Economic Forum 2018, Senior Minister Yao Osafu Mafu said the bauxite deal with Sino Hydro Group Limited would propel the country into a Ghana beyond aid. If I can exchange the bauxite, somebody comes to spend his resources to develop the bauxite into alumina, so that I use the alumina to pay him, that's thinking outside the box. I'm not borrowing, but I'm using my resources to create employment for the exploration and development of my resources. We want the economy to run smoothly. We cannot borrow any longer. The National Service Secretariat has extended the registration for applicants to December 31. This follows challenges in getting all prospective service personnel registered. Officials of the scheme have therefore urged those yet to be posted to remain calm as they are in talks with agencies to get them posted. Here's a report by Bright Jacker. Over 90,000 service personnel for the 2017-2018 service year have been posted to various agencies and institutions across the country. While some personnel have started work, others are yet to go through their biometric registration due to challenges. The situation has compelled management of the scheme to extend the closing date of registration to December 31. When TV3 visited the Accra Biometric Registration Center Tuesday, applicants expressed fear they may be rejected by the agencies and institutions they would be posted to. I came here last week. When I came, the queue was so long, so I couldn't do my... That's why I decided to come today. But Deputy Executive Director in charge of Finance and Administration, Gifty Owari, explains the scheme has put in measures to ensure that no applicant misses out in the placement. The biometric registration delayed, I think, a week before it started because it's done in collaboration with NIE. So when we were ready to start our process, NIE had some little challenges because of the Ghana cuts. It's just a matter of understanding that it's a process and people are going to come 
as and when they are available those who are even in the international world are also going to join us because the western schools just about are just about to complete they register so when they come in they have to come and do the biometric registration they have to come and do the final stage of the registration just so you know we'll be airing the latest investigative piece by anas arimaya anas titled chain by begging and so you might want to stick to tv3 uh, from now till nine and uh, the ministry of employment and labor relations intends to support cocoa farmers employ skilled labor with the view to end child labor in the sector sector minister ignatius bafuiwa made this known at a forum on the review of ghana child labor monitoring system here in accra an estimated 1.89 million children in the country are currently child laborers, of which 60% of them are of school-going age. The Minister of Employment and Labor Relations has called emergency key stakeholders conference to tackle the problem. Discussions at the conference focused on reviewing the monitoring systems of various civil society groups in the fight against child labor. Discussions emphasized they need to harmonize all efforts by various civil society groups into a complete document. Sector Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Ignatius Bafuewa, highlighted new policy initiatives to deal with the problem. I believe strongly that not only will the review of the Ghana Child Labor Monitoring Systems contribute to the realization of the high level of efficiency and functionality of the system after the implementation of the recommendations captured in the final pilot report, that is 2013, in the areas of data collection procedure, tools, questionnaires, and software, setting up of structures, CCPCs and DCPCs at all levels, but will also ensure full utilization of the system by all stakeholders to identify vulnerable children, children at risk, and children engaged in all forms of child labor and abuse. Deputy Minister of Gender and Social Protection, Gifty Ampofo, pledged government commitment to provide funds to fight child labor. There will be a common platform for identification of families affecting, affected by child labor as a result of poverty and to refer them to appropriate remediation services. Director in charge of research and policy at the Trade Union Congress, Dr. Kwabna Nyakoto, expressed the position of the TUC to eliminate child labor. It's actually worse in some areas, particularly in the rural communities, but also in the three northern regions, where the data is said that you could have about half of children that are out of school and are actively engaged in the labor market. Other speakers asked government to tighten its monitoring systems across the country in dealing with the issue. If you're just tuning in, you're watching news live on D or you're watching news here on TV3. We are new day, we are live on DSTV channel 279 and the Ghana National Fire Service has begun investigation to ascertain the cause of the fire which got at Sita Kel Hotel in Kumasi Tuesday morning destroying property in the one-story building. This swift intervention by the fire service averted the blaze from causing more damage. A report by Ibrahim Abubakar. The fire started from one of the hotel rooms and spread to five other rooms at the time occupants were having their breakfast. No casualty was recorded. Hotel staff and residents attempted to douse the fire but were unable to do so due to the lack of a fire extinguisher. Personnel of the fire service swiftly intervened to fight the fire from spreading to other rooms and nearby facilities. Deputy Ashanti Regional Fire Commander DO1 Henry Jiwa advised facility owners and managers to ensure extinguishers and fire detectors are functional. He bemoaned the fire could have been contained easily if the hotel had extinguishers. But what I can advise us, the public should try and use by extinguishers and be trained on how to use them properly. The one who first saw the fire could have attacked the fire if he's been trained. Investigations has been launched to ascertain the cause of the fire. And uh, uh, you're watching uh, New Day on TV3. 
three, and European states warned the United Nations that more than 800,000 people are cut off from aid and may be starving in northeast Nigeria, contradicting government assertions that a crisis has abated and rebuking the world body for failing to secure access. And Nigeria's government has said this year that an emergency in the northeast caused by decade-long conflict with Islamist fighters was easing and efforts should shift from humanitarian relief to longer-term development aid. But in a letter to directors of emergency programs at UN and other aid agencies, the EU, Britain, uh, France and Germany said that United Nations was failing to press home the agency of a disaster which had put children at risk of starvation. On that note, we end your day on TV3. You can get more news updates on our website, 3news.com. As I said earlier, we'll be premiering the latest investigative piece of Anas Arimari Anas titled uh, Chain by Beckett. And so join us from now till 9 a.m. I'm Josh Quinney. Thanks for watching. Good morning. It's a bright, blessed Wednesday. Let's check out the front pages. The Daily Statement starts us off. It says, Ghana emulating China's development module, according to President Akufuado. And over 400,000 get placement for free SHS. Comes with a photo of the Education Minister, Dr. Uh, Matthew Poko Prempe. Vote out a Sedun Kitia. Uh, Alate Jacobs on that side, a former Central Regional Chairman of the NDC. And uh, it, it, uh, see, the photo doesn't look so cool. Uh, Alate Jacobs is urging the NDC to vote out the General Secretary, but why? The Daily Heritage says $50 billion 100 year bond saga. Ghana took off $350 billion to service ban uh, the, the loan, sorry about, about that, uh, says minority. Castle to force in there, uh, the minority spokesperson of finance. And bring back NDC to power, Poku Asoya, to NDC central regional executives. And Ghana aiming to replicate China's success story, Akufuado. And multi, uh, Abeman celebrates 2018, Homo. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so far, Homo has been peaceful, hasn't it? The... Next newspaper for this morning is The Finder. It says Ghana to copy China to create progress and prosperity for the masses, the president. And 400 and. Uh, mm, okay. So, two charged for stealing uh, 200,000 Ghana cities from Consolidated Bank. And demerage decline by 21% in six months, shippers' authorities say so. And provide workable recommendations on government policies or self -marvel. And we're told about the number that has gained uh, access to free SHS placement, some 4, 423,134. Uh, yeah, that's a quite a sizable number, an improvement upon the previous years, isn't it? The, the Independent says government had 20 billion plan uh, to avert needless bank collapse, said Tekpe. He mentioned that here last week when we had a conversation with him that, well, government had put in place plans. In fact, they, uh, they ran to get a levy in an election year to try and avert the situation. IMF yet to decide on Ghana's $2 billion uh, Sino-Hydro deal. Okay, so we're waiting. We're, we're told the Minister for Finance has been asked to. Slow down, I still slowly while they check certain things. The Ghanaian Times, free SHS placement out as double track system takes off. Green track starts September 1, uh, 10, 2018 and gold track begins November 8, 2018. And uh, government to enact law against fiscal indiscipline, uh, senior minister. We were told about this law last year. Ken Oferiata himself mentioned it. So what, what's, the, what's the rehash? Pass the law already. Ghana to replicate Chinese development model, according to the president. The Daily Guide, NDC outdoors dragons, lions, and hawks militia for 2020 polls. What does the MPP have? Asiedun Ketia must go, Alote Jacobs. Bagri Dam floods homes and will copy China's success story, says Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, president of the Republic of Ghana. The publisher, education to be compulsory, Nanado, it says from kindergarten all the way to the top will be compulsory. And 400,000 students kick off double truck 
forget election 2020. Professor Yanka writes to, uh, that's not Professor Yanka, that's Honorable Yanka. Well, I call him Prof anyway. Uh, he writes to Bahama. NPA denies rent allowance payment. And yesterday I saw a very lengthy press statement from the NPA's communications directorate. On to our next uh, paper, the Daily Graphic, Ghana's oldest. It says, a Greek minister secures $216 million uh, loan for planting for food and jobs. 490,514 to go to SHS. They commence double track system by September 11. And Ghana Business Awards rock Accra in October. That's the uh, very final one there uh, for today, Wednesday, the 5th of September. 2018, the year of our Lord. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know more about this, certainly grab your copy of the newspapers. But let's move on and go out to rant. We're talking about child beggars. Should we reinforce what they do by giving them money on the streets? What's your take on that? Let's step out and find out as you rant this morning. A very good morning and welcome to Daily Runs here on New Day. We are live on DSTV channel 279. My name is George Quinn and investigative journalist Anas Arimaya Anas is out with a latest piece titled Chain by Begging. And the team went undercover in areas including Accra, Tamale and Kumasi and they discovered that most of these child beggars were trafficked. And so it brings about the issue of child abuse and child trafficking. And so what has been done, successive government, what have they really done about this matter? And also, you know, it gives room for more questions than answers. And so what do you make of this development? This is the Rant. Let's keep talking. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. I can't actually say this is the last time I it's been a while because some of them has some of them have taken it as to be their job. Mm -hmm. So I don't really feel like giving it out now. Mm -hmm. But then when I go to mosque or when I go to an event and they are doing a fundraising, I, I give out, but not to people working on the street. Mm -hmm. well, all of us have given it to somebody. I think I I cannot say yesterday, today, or tomorrow <laughs> because we Muslims doesn't do that. If you give it, you give them just because of Allah. Okay. So you cannot disclose it. Okay. But I sometimes give it out yeah. just because for the sake of Almighty God. Okay. Yeah. So I'm bringing up the discussion because Anas has come out with a new video. In the video, they just found out that the children begging on the street, they've been trafficked. So most of the elderly people that they, they, you see them with, maybe they bought them to beg. So the business is more like it's lucrative. If it's not okay. lucrative, you will be seeing them on the street. Yeah. So how do you feel knowing that these children on the streets have been trafficked? It's, it's very sad, you know, because these kids are vulnerable kids from outside the country mostly. And then if you are going to traffic them for your own profit, I mean, it's, it's very sad because at their age they should be in school. Yeah. They should they should be doing something with their life because they are so young. I mean, they should be in school rather than being trafficked and then brought onto the street. And it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Even for for someone for for an elder person working on the street, it's very dangerous. Some so a car might fail a brake. Someone might come from somewhere, and there are motorcycles too all over. So they can just get easily knocked down and then be killed by a car. And nobody is going to say anything. What is more scary is that they are from out of town. Mm. Nobody knows them here. So who is going to even fight for their rights? Who is going to fight for them to obtain justice? Mm. So I, I, I think it's very sad that this something like this is going on. Mm -hmm. Togo, Niger, 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 Niger,
Ghana phone him. Your move from move your and a best stress to her. Wrong. And say we are bored and we tight, Kakra. We must have way more food. So I said, say you you want to come more. You want Nigeria. You think we must say you are Ghana phone. Ghana phone we must say we are Niger phone. Now sad you know I say and check Kakra. Now we just come and say too much. No, no. Even sometimes I used to ask them. So in their passports, the occupation side, what are they writing? Is it beggars or what? I don't understand it. You say I don't understand it. But we are. Also be blamed. Do you know that mm. begging, the act of begging and giving is a crime. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a crime. I think people don't know about it. I don't, I don't know. Beggars about it. and destitute at 1969. I, I, I've the never act heard of that. Yes, so I you know. can go yeah. to jail for that. But yes. but you know, uh, I mean, like my brother Oria said here, mostly they are being associated with Islam. Like Muslims are, more, uh, are the corporate most of them. But I think it is worth noting, it is important to mention this. There was a time, during the time of the Prophet, he was at his mosque and then someone came begging. So after the person was done, he called the person and then he said, What you are doing is not the work of a Muslim. It is not the work of a Muslim to beg. So begging is not Islamic, it's not part of Islamic religion. They are doing it for themselves. Look, they can even import from the people, some of the guys to Mecca. You see that somebody in hand has caught. Yes, they'll go to Hajj. They know how to do it. They'll just forge it and then beg you. You, you, you will see, you feel sympathy for him. Uh -huh. You see, they can sit down as if they are cripples. They cannot work. Yes, if you give them the money, later you just raise him. You go to his master and you do accounts. Account. If they didn't do it, they are going to punish him. Which is totally, totally, I mean, baseless and then useless. Uh, once I didn't know, oh, would I have business? I just ran off. So we rest our money. Oh, so we from we from we have bar. Oh, we are not going to have no akakadro. Any kadam for you, Mister Adina. Dear, you have made the labour duty. I have no money. Oh, but to a better no, a position that we bureau. Let us see. As my master started, stress can be. We are going to have a phone for now. There be. Oh, my Niger, Niger for no. Ne, I was a phone. They are not Ghanaians. So all these but people. Some are Ghanaians. They are no. I'm, but if you go to Opebia, uh, if you go to Opebia. Oh, most of them, those at Opebia, they, I'm telling you, they are not Ghanaians. If you want to see, they speak Hausa, like they are Hausa from Ghana. They are not Hausa from Ghana. Mm. You look at their trademarks, you will see. And then sometimes when you are speaking the house style to them, they, their house is very deep than our own. So you might think that they are house from Ghana. Ghana. No, 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 no. And now too, I realize that they start to speak tree. Yesterday I dashed one of them money. Me <laughs> dashed Yes, it, so she now, said it. Them, if, if you still give them money, it means you are keeping them in business. No. So, you see, sometimes the way they will, if you look at them, looking at their face, you can see that they are hungry. They are hungry. So, what will you do? And they know that we Ghanaians, we pity. Ghanaians, we are God fearing. Both Christians and Muslims of Ghana, we are very God fearing and we have some feeling for human. But the fair was there, they have season. <laughs> they have season that they come out. Yeah, they are, they after they are, are, yes, <laughs> after that season, they go back to their, they are from Chad. Uh, they go back to Chad. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. you know it's yeah. the same. They speak to you, they speak to you. Yes. They learn it. You see the big men that are begging? Some of them, when they come to Ghana, they bring onion. They are farmers. Uh, yes. They come with onion. Full trip of uh, uh, trailer, then they will leave it there. They have to sell it for them. Then they have to come and be begging. Those tall, tall, you see them in Agbada and the whole see, stick. I see, I see. Some of them, they are not blind. When he's about to cross, a, there is a gutter here. When, ah, one day the guy was crossing the gutter, then I see that oh, he didn't even mind the one holding the stick for him. He just jumped the gutter. I said, Ah! This guy is not a blind guy. And truly, when I question him, he's not a blind guy. You see? So this is how it is. We know them. We are with them. We give them. But we give them in the name of God. We don't care what... So that means we are using religion to make 
a business drive. Exactly. Something wants to stop. Exactly. So can we wipe out that religion and ensure that okay, this is a crime to give up and it's a crime to take. That's a law. So let's wipe out that if religion. If you want us to wipe that, then the migration should make sure they will not allow them in. Mm. If they don't allow them in, we will not feel pity for them. Because for we but if they allow them in and we see them like this, we feel for them. And we give them, not because of their strategies, it's like the churches. <laughs> People go to church and donate money, and these pastors are using cars, and the person don't have car, but he donate to the church. Yes, as I told you, we have one guy. If he come, he's a donkey. We Muslims, if we heard Prophet Muhammad, we have to shout, we have to praise him. We come after you are sitting there, we say, Anna Muhammad! We have to give you. I'm telling you, you have to give him. Immediately, you shout, Anna, you finish the two people, you have to give him. You don't have option that to give him. Well, so so. <laughs> the, the public have made their thoughts clear on begging. It's something that government should sit up and ensure we, we know, deal with it in the entirety. Just make sure the borders are so effective. It shouldn't be porous for people or foreigners to come in here to do the begging. Let's do what you should think watching home. Log on to our social media platforms on Facebook. It's News on TV3. And on Twitter, it's our News TV3. We came to you from Nima. Yeah, Sakura. Thanks for watching. And keep watching today. Did you know that most of the children you see out there begging for alms or actually uh, in Accra, Kumasi and Tamale have been held by those who jailed them? Did you also know that they've been out there as a reflection of the breakdown of our systems? Well, in this latest documentary, investigative journalist Anas Aramea Anas has been scouting and panning out what's happening and has been funded by the European Union and uh, commissioned by O Africa. And he titles it Chained by Begging. Take a look at it. These kids, these innocent children. My name is Anas Arimiao Anas, and I love children. I am an undercover journalist and have made various documentaries on the plight of children. I've done an investigation into the Osu children's home. I've done the Nigerian baby factory story and also the orphanage story known as Careless. Like many of you, while driving around Accra and Kumasi, my heart is touched by the plight of little children I see. I see them begging by the roadside. They are all very skinny, badly dressed and look hungry, bringing their hands to their mouths. And yet their numbers seem to be going up. There are more and more of them. They give a poor image of our country. After all, we are supposed to be a middle income country. As an advocate for child rights, I have decided to look past emotions and to go underground with my team to try and understand exactly what's going on. Begging has always been against the law and it baffles me that the police always tolerate it. From every point of view, the rights of children are being grossly disregarded. The right to care and protection, to be with family, the right to be in school and the right not to engage in hazardous labor. Today, my team and I are taking you on a journey to unveil the masters of the underworld who control the begging syndicates. My first encounter was in Nima Market in Accra, where we met a young guy called Mahmoud, a beggar with a supposed blind father. I told him I am an agent to a Saudi-led company who are here in Ghana to help people like him. The next day we met at the mosque where there were many such children with their masters. We sat down and began a discussion with one of them. Mm -hmm. 
kene keke yi na in aka tama kama ka je school e ka ko ma school it was clear he had been taken out of school and brought to Accra only to work and there seemed to be a similar situation with these two lovely little girls I met begging on the streets of Kumasi. Who brought you to Ghana? My brother. So when you get the money, you will take it to your brother. Why? I'm getting my brother's give him the money and you give it to your father in your country. Where are you from? Yes. What, how old are you? Eight years, eight years. How long have you been here? That is me, what is your name? Yes. Maria. Yeah. And you, what is your name? No. Me, Aisha. No, it means you are also lying. This one lied. You are also lying. This one told me the name is uh, Mariam. Now she's telling me that is not the name. The name is Anafahat. So what is your name? Nafirat. Nafirat. <laughs> so you are lying to me. No, for my country, my name. My country, my name is Nafirat. That Ghana, Aisha. Ghana, your name is Aisha. You go. Why? My country. Uh, are you not happy here? Are you not happy? You are not happy. Why? You are happy for your country. No, no. By not proud to say she's not happy. I don't know that she left my mommy. All these testimonies were making me rethink. It seems to me begging was meant to be for the destitute in society the absolutely helpless in our communities. But it's now becoming a money-making venture to the extent that its perpetrators are exploiting and taking advantage of the sympathy some of the public have for children to extort money from them. At every busy junction in our big towns and cities, you would either be hacked, fill a pool of your cloth, or hands by these beggars, or see women seated with two or three children under an umbrella with a bow. It seems to me the children may be trafficked and that we may be looking at organized crime. I also had a discussion with a CID friend of mine and he pointed out that they believe it's only the very youngest children who make money as the public feels more sympathy towards them. Therefore, the children trafficked are often under eight years old. We arranged to go to a place called Sabonzongo in Accra. It is a resting place for all these beggars. The sheer number of children involved, their young age and their terrible living conditions was a shock to me. All the money they make goes to their so-called mothers, brothers or sisters who determine what they eat and when. All these kids go through a lot of hazards such as insults, beatings and are at the mercy of the weather conditions. Not to talk of the risk of sexual abuse from the masters and their own kind and the separation from their families. Moving vehicles could also kill them. So who is making the money off the back of these little children? Who is behind all this? Who are the leaders and linchpins? Follow me. So I met Musa in Kumase, who was the first to be able to explain to me how the kids were being trafficked from Niger. He even called it Pekin business, as they are literally dealing in children, as if they were commodities. You know your people some are doing that.
Musa confirmed to me that it's all a big business. I met another trafficker, Peter, today to give full details about how children are being trafficked. I kept asking why Islamic clerics would do this. I was deeply shocked that it seemed to be so easy to traffic children. These kids being used for the begging business have been seriously schooled to let lies look like truth. They use fake names and other subterfuge. Some of these beggars are from Ghanaian origin. From Ghanaian families where begging is the family industry and that needs to be stopped. Because children are victims, children and their families need counseling and protection. But the majority of these children are trafficked from Niger. They are trafficked from madrasas, where children are given to the Malams for Islamic teaching. Through this investigation, it was clear to me that the campaign is always sitting comfortably in Niger. The solution lies in your hands. Please stop giving to children beggars today. You are fueling a horrible child trafficking industry where small children are bought and sold, trafficked across borders, far from their families and forced to beg to make their masters rich. You too can be like an ass. Please stop the abuse through action. This is just the beginning. We will be continuing with our investigations. Please stay tuned. These kids, these innocent children, they are our future. Thanks so much for staying there and uh, welcome back uh, to New Day. Uh, the newspapers are ready. Uh, you've seen the front pages. Uh, BNFT says Parliament to ratify public sector reform strategy. Daily Graphic has uh, 490,514 to go to SHS. They commence double track uh, September 11. I'm sure you'll be asking. September 11. Um, and then the Herald says, National Service Bosses Blow 
12 million Ghana cities on luxurious cars and others. Hungry workers cry over neglect. Daily Guide will copy China success story. That's the president talking. The Times says uh, the double track system takes off. Uh, if you have a green track, you're starting September 10. If you have a gold track, you're beginning November 8 and uh, government to enact law against fiscal indiscipline. We'll take a look at all these stories as long as we have the time. I guess this morning, government spokesperson on uh, social infrastructure, Richard Asante Boy is here. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're doing great. Thanks for joining us. And then, uh, former uh, member of parliament for uh, the North uh, Dying constituency, he recently lost his bid to, uh, to take over, uh, is that the, the secretary position? Yes, the yes, of the NDC, George Law. Uh, how was the elections? You lost very them. interesting. Yeah. And, uh, very, very interesting. Okay. Grateful for your time, gentlemen. Now, uh, let's start our conversation. I want us to take a look at this story quickly. There's a Daily Guy story. NDC outdoors uh, dragons, lions, and hawks uh, militias for 2020 polls. That's a story put up by the Daily uh, Guide. It says that it is becoming clear that the NDC is busily uh, forming vigilante groups for the 2020 elections. According to sources, the groups are also being armed to form militia for the 2020 polls. Heavily built men, uh, we call them macho men, that's according to the paper, have been recruited for groups. Uh, with names such as the Hawks, uh, Dragons, and Lions. Uh, the paper refers to recent elections. Uh, it mentions Eastern Region, where they saw some of our lions. It mentions um, some other parts of the Ashanti Region, where they saw the Dragons. Uh, at the Chinebua Kodia Senior High School, uh, we're told the Dragons were there, and uh, the Hawks were there uh, protecting as some NDC goes. George, let me start the conversation with you. This is what Daily Graphics is reporting. The issue of vigilante uh, groups in political parties, uh, it gets a bit uh, uh, scary when we hit uh, election years. We've seen what has been happening uh, under the, uh, the current administration. We've seen the uh, vigilante groups uh, have their own way in certain situations. Is this perhaps a build-up to what we expect in 2020? Well, good morning, uh, Bright. Mm. Good morning to our cherry viewers. And, uh, <coughs> good morning to my brother, Richard. Good morning, my brother. Well, it's been a while. Mm. Uh, let me use this opportunity to thank our revered uh, delegates in the Volta region for right. and, and the whole Volta region as a whole for a sus NDC as a successful uh, for a successful you know Congress. Albeit with, <laughs> we deal with all sorts of problems, but I mean, we take it and, and, and ride on. Um, <clears throat> right. We've got into a stage where we cannot necessarily count on the state security apparatus to provide security at certain events. You know, when, at a political party pool, or Congress, mm. you have several interests. And so when you are going in there, the party itself needs to ensure that there's some internal security arrangement. And all these things that the daily uh, guide is talking about right. was just uh, internal security agreement that were yeah. put in place. If you came to the voter reading now Congress, you found that possibly there were no names put on, but there were people in uh, uh, <coughs> branded shirts, you know, who were supposed to be um, providing internal security. So the even, though, even though we had the a police. Few, yeah, a few, now, a few policemen there, mm. you know, to control uh, all the things, the exercises that people would, 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 would put up. So clearly, uh, this is not as has been tacked to be like malicious. I didn't see any of them carrying a gun, for instance. But you see, right, in Akan language, we say if the what? Yes, also. In recent times, yeah. times we've seen all sorts of invisible forces and visible forces and all sorts of forces. Kandahar boys being unleashed on us. We're having a party program, and we are. Any time we have a party program, any time we are doing anything, and this now henceforth, mm. 
some of us are going to continue to advocate that we have our own security system because we don't know when these invisible forces and things would want to come and cause confusion and mayhem. So it is within our rights as a party to do so, and we'll do so all the way into the elections. We are not leave, we will not leave any stone on tent. Oh, no, we'll not leave any. Let, you know, let me yeah. ask you this. Yes, ask me. We saw these persons at the NPP prior to 2016 uh, rallies. Yes. We saw them at the <coughs> final rally in at um, uh, uh, the Trade Fair Center. Yes. And these were the same groups who became wayward and are still wayward because they are still attacking people. What is the promise? That these dragons, lions, and hawks that the guide is reporting will not become like the NPP groups? You see, right, we've always had the Azoka boys mm. as our internal security in a certain Congress. When, uh, when we came to power, did you hear about the Azoka boys? We saw all the things that the visible forces were doing. Oh, yes. No. Did you hear it? Because we we are dealing with boys what, who are disciplined. What, what we had were internal yes. party conferences where they, they had issues with Yes, but I'm saying that beyond Francis is, I'm saying that beyond this did you party. hear about I've talk about boys going to take somebody out of their office and, and then saying that no somebody's office should be locked or beating some security person and things. It means that our boys were disciplined. And we have a way of controlling our boys. What we cannot assure of, or what we don't want to do, is to leave our faith in the hands of the police so that the MPP people have a, free, a field day and come and attack us and misbehave. Look, we have all the intelligence on the ground. We know they are training their boys for election 2020. And we will not sit aloof and watch. Is, is the police unable to deal with these uh, kinds of... Well, how has the police proven that they were able to deal with it? Simple Kandahar boys going to lock state institutions. What, what has been the result? The police were standing by when the invisible forces attacked the judge while sitting in open court. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the police have demonstrated over time that they are unable to deal with these things, whether for, uh, because of politics or whatever. We are saying that we are not going to leave our destiny in the hands of the Ghana police. They will have a job to do. We will respect their job. Mm -hmm. When they were going to count ballot papers, we asked the police to call none of the police. But we also kept an, eye, kept an eye on everybody who came there. Mm -hmm. So I am saying in simple terms that we will have our internal arrangement, we will continue to have our internal arrangement to protect our party interest. And nobody will take that right away from us. Because the MPP has shown us that if we leave our destiny in the hands of the police, they will deal with us ruthlessly with these invisible forces and, and all the other uh, names that we have. And we will match them boot for boot. I am one of the advocates. I like. I am. I feel strongly about it because I've seen what they've done to party members because we 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 we, we, we lost our guard and thought that the police would protect us. Never again should we leave our destiny in the hands of the police alone. What? We should have a plan B, and what? our plan B will be the internal security that will continue to protect. One would argue that this kind of uh, perception of the police service. It, it, it fits the mandate of the service. It, it, it weakens the police service. So let the police show us that they have what it takes to protect all of us. Where you have a situation where clearly there is a situation and they cannot protect you. Right. You are a human being. Would you stand aloof and count, continue to count on the police that cannot handle very, very simple things when you know they have the capacity to do it? You see, we are not saying the police don't have capacity you. But we are saying that they give us the impression that when we go out there, we protect only one group. And even where it is clear that people have done things and we have pointed the fingers at them and said, look, these are the who did it. They find it difficult to have them arrested and punished. So the assurance is that these dragons, lions, and hawks will be tamed to do party work and not be let... Uh, they are uh, purely for party okay. purposes. Okay. For us, they are purely for party internal security. And I'm saying that going into election 2020, we will continue to have them. We will protect our ballot boxes with them. We will protect everything that we we'll do with them. The assurance is that beyond that, you will not see them doing the kind of things that uh, the, the, MPP, the MPP did. And if the MPP wants to give us assurance that this is not necessary, they should stop training the boys where they are training. We know the training centers. 
Richard, vigilante groups in political parties. This is where we are. Uh, we are building up to 2020. This is a story in the Daily Guide. For me, as an observer, it is worrying. The assurance from the NDC is that these are uh, internal security arrangements. Something you will take easily? Uh, thank you very much, Brian. <coughs> I say good morning to your amazing viewers and my good friend. Uh, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> I find this explanation quite ridiculous. I mean, and it's quite laughable because, I mean, listening to him making reference to the fact that it became necessary for NDC to form these groups because of the formation or the existence of uh, invisible forces and whatever you want to call them. We know that the first political vigilante group that was established in this country was the Azuka Boys. He formed that, and we know how they terrorized the good people of the North. The, all the mayhem that they visited on the good people of the North, including burning of tender documents. You remember during the NDC era, including chasing uh, DCs and uh, chasing Haruna uh, Idrusu uh, uh, himself and chasing uh, uh, Honorable Musa Fuseni because they have difficulties with him. There have been a lot of things. I remember San Janjan's constituency. There were a lot of difficulties and even issues that came out as a result of burning of the party properties and also assemblyman property in uh, 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 the, that constituency. We've seen a lot of things happen in politics. I mean, you, I, I do remember during the NDC era, there was a, 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 a brother of Collins that was Nabu, uh, Naba, remember Naba, who was literally terrorizing the group of Bronga Afrojin. To the extent I sent a petition, I wrote a petition, and petitioned the then IGP, Mr. Kudalo, on the conduct and activities and the illegalities the man was perpetuating in that part of the country. And nothing was done about some of these things. So I understand that over the period, the reasons why it became necessary for certain political parties to sort of put together a group of young men and women to help internal securities of the party has been as a result of the inactions of the police administration. However, I'm not seeing same actions in these recent times. Recent times, the police administration has shown that they are ready to deal with and combat anybody who flouts the laws. And sure I of course, saying. and that's what we've seen over the period. Individuals have been picked up, people are being arranged before the courts. After when the issues get to the court, as to what will come out of the court, me and him knows that it does not sit in the bosom of the police uh, uh, prosecutor. This is the law and the evidence that will be provided before the court. Mm. So that's the thing. Evidence is the name of the game. If you go to court and you pr pr provide flimsy and weak evidence against an individual, there's no way the person will be thrown into jail because somebody believes that this person is a criminal. It does not lie in your mouth. And they say a multitude of suspicion doesn't constitute a, a, a crime. So if you think that you suspect somebody to be committing a crime, somebody's misconducting themselves, does not necessarily mean that the person has indeed committed a crime. So it ought to be the law. So for but you, I'm, the police is checking this. I'm saying that over a period, the police, I mean, the new police administration we're seeing mm. has been up to the task and they've been working across the, uh, the, the country. I know that examples. President Mahama you has. You cite examples where you think the police has. Of course, just recently, Abnov, mm. people were arrested. You remember to the extent that even the president had to suspend a, a, a regional minister because uh, there was allegation that he uh, was uh, literally undermining the uh, uh, police administration. You remember that incident? Mm. A, a regional minister was suspended. Mm. There have been other issues where individuals have been arrested. Party, for the first time, party members have been arraigned before court. We saw none of that during the NDC era. I do remember when even the Me Too saga broke up. Where I went to Supreme Court on that matter regarding the fact that the conduct of these people were unheard of and the kind of insinuations, especially in the insults, they continued to rain on the, on the members of the, of, of the bench. It was something that was frightening. The, the kind of pronouncement, threatening death and all that on the, on, on the lives of uh, the Chief Justice then they was something convicted. that thought was unthinkable. I remember these people after they were convicted, convicted. The, the, the then president, President Mahama, decided to and with the help of the NDC, who queued up and, and signed petitions, basic petitions, to, to free these people instead of allowing them to go through the, 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 the full sentences. Was it out of the law? I mean, the point is that there are some things that legally might be right, but you realize that the, the signals you send to the general public is wrong. 
Because you are making so it look what like is the point when you, people. What is the point we are making here? So the point I'm making is that we've gone past all these areas, but now there's a new wave of uh, 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 development happening within the police administration. Mm. There's a new leadership of the country that suggests that we are ready to deal with people not by their party colors, not by their religion, not by their tribe, not by uh, any uh, association that they belong to, but the mere fact that these individuals are being judged on the content of their character. If somebody misconduct themselves, we allow the laws of the land to take its course. That's what we ought to do. If you do not approach things in that manner, a time or moments will come that individuals or armed robbers coming to our houses to rob us will come in either NDC T-shirts or MPP T-shirts or PPP T-shirts. They know that after that event, the MPP General Secretary or the NDC General Secretary or CPP General Secretary will come to their defense. Communicators will be unleashed to go and defend them. So let's deal with criminals. I find it very regrettable that for the, 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 the first group that was formed, the, the Hawks, was formed by President, uh, former President Mahama uh, in Ashanti region. He during the moment that he was, he says during, it the, during, during, during the moment that he was in back with uh, on his it, many works. It is uh, on ten but the point is that you could do the Johnny Walker business, go about walking across the country and do whatever it is that you want. But going about creating militias and forming some of these groups doesn't help. I know there's uh, the Hawks in Ashanti region. I know that there's what you call the voter Dr Draculas in the voter region. I know that the, 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 the Northern vampires have been created to augment the Azoka boys. I know of the, 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 the ones that you also mentioned, mm. uh, all these names. The point is that to what end? The sort of training... How, how, should, you, how should we deal with it? We saw the NPP come into power. They started misbehaving. There was public uproar. There was no action until it got out of hand. How do we deal with I, this? I think, Brian, there have been action at every stop of the Okay, way. you if there was action. I'm sure How do you, we deal maybe with to it? you, you were not satisfied with the, the actions the that were taken. The public, not me. The public was I not mean, satisfied. the public, there hasn't been any statistics on that. So maybe you, let's, you, let's you, lay base it based you, on you, your you, own you had, intuition. You that, that to you. Up to today. Civil society want political vigilante groups disbanded. Certainly, they cannot be satisfied. Uh, that is I what think, I mean. Uh, 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 see, the, 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 there's one thing that we ought to understand and appreciate. Mm. We have a, a, a law that allows freedom of association. But in the same vein, there's a law that would restrict any uh, a, a group mm. of individuals that would do things that would literally undermine the constitution. So it means that that particular aspect ought to be looked at. The NDC be uh, behavior of putting together a, a, a group that will look at party internal security. We saw what they did during their recent uh, 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 elections. Greater Accra region, the sort of mayhem they, they visited on the people over there. People were beaten literally. Ashanti region, there was near commotion. Did the police act? Eastern region was com it was a complete Richard, mess. Did, did the, the police the, act? The police acted. You you they just defended them. That I'm saying that uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. The things. police but acted. But you just mentioned two examples where the NDC. I know some of the people misbehave. have been picked up. But I haven't I heard know, the police I, act. I know some of the people have been picked up. I know some of the people have been invited. I know some of the leadership of the party in some of these regions have equally been invited by the police administration. I know some of the in issues are being investigated by the police. I know some of the conducts are being investigated. So at the end of the day, that is what we, why we have poli uh, participatory policing. That in the modern system of policing, we need people to contribute information. Okay. So we ought to assist the police in some of these ventures to make sure that we bring to boot the perpetrators of crime. For me, Brad, okay. Brad, I do not simple, subscribe to. Brad, my uh -huh. No, my, let I do not subscribe up, to. Uh, five seconds. I do not subscribe to the my seniors' uh, understanding that we, they ought to put together a group of men who would what so uh, uh, protect their interests or whatever it, they, they want to call it. The issue would is you, that... Would you, to, therefore, to, would you therefore also encourage the NPP to also disband the, the groups? You see, th th there are two things that we need to understand and appreciate. For the NPP, the way the, the invisible forces the, uh, uh, the, and others came about, mm. it wasn't something that the official dumb sat down, put structures in place and created. Mm. A group of young men put themselves together that they were helping in assisting party, the, the party uh, activities. Work. 
during we'll, the, we'll the, do the this Congress. Be, just, because, just you ask, see, just I mean, the, the point is that because there's not a formal So you structure, can't disband but these, them. But these people have... Richard, you are really saying that you can't disband them. Built the a formal structure. Be, there, there's not a formal structure. Oh, okay, all right. So that I'm you grateful. can say that... Richard, I'm grateful. Let me get to There are a group of people that we have very, very Let me get to I am laughing all the way because... You see the way Richard is struggling to even <laughs> make his case. <laughs> Look, very simple. When John Buedu, with all the public uproar and then civil society, uh, what was his answer? He said the NPP would never disband these groups. And look, why? He should come into our constitution, read our constitution and find out whether there is any group called the Hawks or anything in our constitution. Yeah, you, Just as it's not in the constitution. You're also suggesting that they yeah, are saying that, 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 that yes. Okay. So so but, but we are saying that we will. Region. Somebody like me. Eh, I will continue to encourage NDC to get groups like this because we will not leave our destiny it's not a in the threat, hands. It's not a threat to our democracy. Listen, listen. I'm saying that because if the it, it looks like the, the kiki kiki doesn't stop, the party it, it listen, comes into power, they are unable to control them. I am saying that if the kiki, we have demonstrated that we are able to control them. We have demonstrated. They have not demonstrated. And so I'm saying that if they don't, if they want all these things to stop, they should disband, disband their invisible forces and allied groups. And then we would also decide that, okay, we are safe and therefore we're not in uh, Anything le less than that, we will continue to prepare our people, we continue to protect ourselves, and we continue to ensure that we have groups like this who protect us during the election year particularly. I'm grateful. Let, let's take a look at the Herald before we take a quick break and come back. National service bosses blow 12 million on luxurious vehicles. The story is saying the President of Kufado's ban on the purchase of vehicles by state institutions has been defied by management of the national service scheme by needlessly uh, buying luxurious Toyota cars for themselves, uh, borehole machines, tractors, and bulldozers, while the workers complain of poor remuneration, hunger, and neglect. The total amount uh, spent on the items is 12,174,299 Ghana cities, 95 pesos. Um, interestingly, according to the paper, some of the cars could have been rented to do the jobs for, for which they were procured, saving the state additional expenditure in terms of fewer labor and maintenance. Um, the rented. story goes on ahead to say that uh, the former administration of the scheme has left um, some uh, new Toyota Hilux uh, vehicles, um, but yet they have gone ahead to buy uh, these cars. Now, give to worry, a worry, Abwaji, the deputy executive director of the scheme in charge of finance and administration, confirmed purchasing the vehicles. She told the Herald that the 10 luxury cars were official duty cars for herself, her boss, Mustafa Yusuf, and various directors, while the Toyota Hilux pickup cars were bought for the free senior high school secretariat through the Ghana Education Service with the involvement of Buffer Stock. That's the story. We're told also by the paper that the Toyota vehicles were to be used to monitor certain uh, farming projects being undertaken by the National Service Scheme. Richard, you can clear this. The ban on purchasing of vehicles, is that still in force? Uh, thank you very much, uh, mm. Bright. I think, uh, 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 reading the story, said they bought for themselves bulldozers, uh, caterpillars. <laughs> I mean, um, you, you, from that angle, mm. you then realize that there's some mischief being played by the, the paper. I mean, officials of national service who buy for themselves bulldozers, caterpillars. Uh, are they sitting in those uh, 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 heavy duty trucks? to work or what are they going to do with that? I mean, it tells you that there's some mischief being peddled here. What I know of is that the service has given some vehicles to the Ghana Education Service to support them, free uh, uh, SHS uh, secretary for them to also to use, to, for it to be used for the monitoring. And yeah, it, it is, it is stated so in, in you realize that these are vehicles that the service bought to support the activities of the, uh, uh, the, the education the scheme sector. and then the free senior So it is not something that the, the leadership, to the the, the the leadership of, the, of, the, of, of the service bought for themselves. You realize that the national service, as part of its operation, do have farms but across but the country. Richard, uh, I'm coming. Uh, quickly, I'm coming. Quickly, I, I, sorry, sorry. And those sorry, farms uh, Richard, supply, sorry, if you sorry, allow I me have to, to interrupt. Sorry. Uh, I want us to clear that one because uh, in the story, uh, the deputy executive director, uh, Madam Gitya, That's uh, what is being Wari reported. Abuaje is saying, she told the Herald that the 10 cars were official duty cars for herself, her boss, 
and various directors. Now, the, uh, the borehole machines, the tractors and bulldozers, uh, according to the story, are to go to the Secretariat in its farming project to supply uh, food to free senior high schools. That's what I was asking. If the ban on uh, buying vehicles is... Uh, right, is, I, I, was, I, was, I, I was landing on a particular point, so I will mm -hmm. not lose my chain of thought. Uh, so you, you, you realize that the National Service, mm. as part of its operation, do have farms across the country that they sell same to the buffer stock for them to pro, uh, give to the, the free uh, education free or the, 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 or the, the education, to support the educational sector, particularly their, 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 their meals and other things that they, 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 they do need. So it's a business they are running because they don't give it to them for free. So if they buy uh, equipment like tractors and other things, that will facilitate and uh, help expand the farm that they are doing. I think there's, I see nothing wrong with that particular thing. The ban on a uh, purchase of vehicles, we're looking at officials mm. buying cars for their personal use. And that one, you ought to seek clearance from the, the presidency. Okay. And I think that these cars, as far as I'm concerned, and I know, because I've seen that they've put a twist, that they would have bought some of them for themselves. No. I know that all these cars they bought, 10 uh, pickups and other cars they bought, they bought it for Ghana Education Service. So they, they are not using it? It's not for them. Okay. The tractors so the and the bulldozers. So the paper the deputy director say, wrong if you, uh, yeah, Of course. If you say okay. they bought uh, 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 bulldozers and tractors and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and boreholes, those ones that they are using for their plants, uh, their, their farms for irrigation purposes and all that, these farms for the, 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 the management of the scheme. The gifty and, 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 his, and, and the, the, the head over there, it's not for them. They just to support and make sure that whatever effort they are putting in the uh, it can, uh, gives it's just a proper uh, fruits for, for the country and also for the scheme, for them to make in a lot of money to support other ventures. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that a state institution will be able to run its affairs to the extent that now they can generate some funds and support other aspects of the state. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, 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 the issue ought to lie. But to, for a paper to craft a story that they bought a bulldozers, tractors for themselves, which is entirely not, which is not true, then I think that is uh, something that we need so to condemn. You, you even doubt that the deputy director is saying that the vehicles were for herself, her boss, and other directors. See, uh, this is this story mm. is quite fraudulent to say the least. Okay, and I think we need to condemn I, it. I, I, I'll take a break and come back. When I come back, I'll get George to react to that, and then we can move. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. Right, and uh, welcome back. We ended up on the, the story. Uh, uh, George, so the, the, the issue is that uh, Richard is not too sure about the no, I'm not too sure. I'm sure. Uh, uh, okay, I've given you the facts. His, his suggestion is that I'm not too sure. Me these, that. okay, uh, I'm sorry <laughs> for saying that. These vehicles <laughs> were bought uh, not for their use, even though a deputy director is insisting that uh, the ten were bought for their use. But the the borehole machines, the tractors, and bulldozers are to go to uh, the the schemes project on a Greek to supply food to senior high schools. You you see, right? I, I think that in the larger context. We must say that, yes, it's a normal thing the National Service does in terms of trying to equip their various projects mm. and, and things like that. But, right, you asked a very relevant question. Has a presidential edit that no institution or no head of institution or no government appointee should buy new cars? Is it still in force or it has been lifted? Clearly, you see, Richard tried to play smart, but the, his smartness will not go very far. We agree that there have been tractors, we agree that there have been pickups that have been given to the Ministry of Education and things like that. But these vehicles that we see, eh, with the numbers, GX 2018, is this for distribution of car, uh, V8? Is it for distribution of food to schools? Or is it, has it been given to the Ghana Education Service? You have GX 1633, 18. You have 1634, 18. You have all these cars. And uh, 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 v 8 that has been bought for directors. And that's what we are talking about. We are not talking about the other cars that have been given to institutions. They cannot deceive us by saying that we gave some cars. Yes, you gave some cars to, to support your programs. Nobody is fighting that. We are saying that your president has told this nation that I, the president of the Republic of Ghana, have given instructions that no appointee should buy a new vehicle until further notice. I'm saying that has that uh, ban been lifted? He said that... It, it, 
some vehicles can be bought back with permission from the. I am saying, the, the I am, I am, I am saying that. Has the president? Is there any evidence that the presidency gave? Uh, uh, um, Maybe that's uh, what we need to find out. Then. Yes, but I'm saying that at the close already, have there been new vehicles bought or not? Clearly, we have the vehicles in pictures. So what Richard is saying, I do a uh, concocted story. It cannot be true. The reality on the ground is that, yes, the MPP appointees continue to buy vehicles in spite of the deceit. In spite of the deceit that, uh, 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 what's it called, that uh, 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 they are not buying any new vehicles and things like that. So, clearly, I mean, you see, these things continue to happen. And Richard has the unpleasant duty of going to sit here and trying to poo-poo it away. It will not go away because the evidence is clear. The evidence is clear. The evidence is that they are deceiving Ghanaians every day. If they need the vehicles to undertake their work, maybe the president should lift a ban on buying you vehicles see, if they you need You see, them. right. The director of National Service Scheme, mm -hmm. I know you, is a friend. Mm. Nana B. He's a former member of parliament. He's a former member of parliament, a very uh, nice friend of mine. I know some of the directors. They already have vehicles. They came and met vehicles. The former directors did not go away with their vehicles. As to whether one and a half years into the administration, there's a need to go and buy these luxury vehicles and be driving around, it's another matter. In other places, you know, vehicles are pulled. Look, when we went to the parliament uh, of Rwanda, they had like two V8s packed. And then they said, well, if they want to travel outside into the hinterland, everybody has to go in there. That is the kind of thing, if we want to be prudent, those are the kind of things we should be doing. These luxury lifestyles where our appointees at every uh, turn are buying luxury cars and driving around, mostly even in Accra. How many times have you heard that national service uh, directors have gone on tour of their projects and things like that? How many times? In one and a half years. Yeah, they, so, uh, so, 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 <laughs> right. Bottom line is that, you see, one, this public deceit must stop where we are pretending that we are doing the right thing and then we pass back to do the, uh, uh, this kind of thing too. Right, you see, I, I sit down and I, I wonder why Ghanaians are not reading through something. Even at the level of uh, uh, administration. Our roads are bad. And therefore, we are giving an excuse that well, when I'm going on a bad road, uh, I have to use a V8 because the roads are bad. I just came back, uh, went to the voter region, but I came through Pandai. Uh, willing to see corridor, in the yeah. corridor road. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking myself, all the VAs that we buy, if we save half the cost, we could give that money to the contractor to finish that road, and therefore my Camry or, my, or his Corolla can conveniently go on that route. But the, the, the accusations that your government didn't do, the, the president was there. Please, the, your please didn't, the, didn't the, 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 the Eastern Corridor Road was started by us, and we're in, 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 uh, uh, it was in progress. Mm. If we are still in power, it would have been finished by now. Because it was job in progress. We are saying that one and a half years that they have come. Why wouldn't they complete it? Why wouldn't they complete it? Okay. Why wouldn't would they put a stop to all the other roads that we are, we are doing, the Cocoa Roads uh, and others? If they yeah, had continued to pay, they are continuing to pay contractors for all of us, you know, uh, 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 for all the roads to be done. Mm. By now, we would be telling a different story. As for this V8, I always get embarrassed when, and when I stand by the street and see all these V8s. Yet, when you go to the countries where we are taking loans, Brad, you have been there. They don't, How many, they, they they don't, don't do this, this kind of thing. And we should be ashamed of ourselves. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let's touch base with the, uh, the double track system and wrap up the conversation this right, morning. I wanted to just say oh, something. Let's small. move on. I have oh, just on, eight on this is, no, no, rules I have that just you talked about. I have just if five NDC lose elections and the, the night of hesitant, they share contrast to their party face for as though they were sharing granites. You, you mean the Which government road? won't come and you mean stop the Corridor Road? The Eastern Corridor Road is in it's it's continuing. It's ah, being okay. So it's not that I'm not saying that I'm 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 saying that i am saying uh, we'll begin school September 10. Uh, that's uh, on the daily graphic. Uh, we're told that the next batch will go to school on November 8. So September, November. 
Richard, let's, this is a, a story that is well known, uh, sure, as viewers know, uh, the double track system. So finally, we, we're going to school, but there are a few issues. Uh, the GES is suggesting that some unplaced candidates uh, were to do a self placement to get themselves into schools with vacancies. So not, first of all, not all candidates who qualified have been placed. The GS says they should do self-placement to get themselves into uh, schools. Again, the GS says that uh, it has uploaded uh, schools with vacancies on its portal so that students can go there and get um, uh, placement. And then, uh, of course, the, the processes uh, are here. Uh, you go there, you select a region, a program, a school, and then you can get yourself placed. These are uh, short challenges we envisage. How, going forward, how do we try and make this so comfortable for parents and the students? Oh, thank you very much. I think, right, I think uh, uh, as a country, one of the greatest benefits or greatest things that we've done for the good people of this country over the years had been the introduction of the free SHS. That's mm -hmm. one of the most unique way of making sure that the natural resources and also the, 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 the funds belonging to the state is appropriated and every Tom, Dick and Harry <coughs> within this country do get, get benefit from it. Mm. That even if you're in a forgotten part of the country, so long as you have a family member or relative that is supposed to have access to education, that individual is going to benefit from this policy and that we need to applaud the president, his excellence, Nanado Dankwakufado, for such a forward-thinking policy that would make sure that at least the Kokot daughter will get access to school. Jifa's daughter will get access to school. Eshitu's daughter will equally get access to good education. And I think that it's an initiative that at every step of the way, we need to encourage and make sure that we all work as a country in unison to make this policy a success. Mm. I'm happy that this year has kickstarted us again. Remember uh, the last uh, year we saw a good number of people having access together, where uh, access to education, where we saw an enrollment increase in excess of 90,000. That was quite a phenomenal figure, and I thought that that was a good thing because it is better to have our people going to school than to see them on the street selling dog chains and also getting themselves into other social vices. It is a very good way of making sure that at least as a country we have equity across the world because over the years, if what Dr. Kwame Nkrumah started up now, where we have the Northern Scholarship, where the people of the Northern region were having access to fair education. They had it for in excess of 50 years. If same is being replicated now across the country, I think that for fair, uh, fairness sake and also for the fact that there's somebody who is thinking about how to make sure that every household gets this access, I think that is good. This policy, this time around, is seeing an introduction of a new system that would make sure that we accommodate more and also we make use of the Ivy League schools, the uh, class A schools, because most often than not, we see old school boys, uh, uh, politicians and doctors and people who are in a place of influence having their case in these Ivy League schools to the extent that Somebody possibly from my hometown, Brekum, whose father is a cocoa farmer, will find it difficult to get access to some of these schools because of the system that we have in place. With this double track system, it helps to absorb because there are, there are two tracks. Richard, sorry, I'm not cutting, but I, I wish we could, because of time, I, I wish we could touch on f the, the very key point. For instance, those who will be at home, we have a duty to protect them until they go to I school. Think, I think, and, I think and there and are models are, that, are in the, in the course of time, yeah. there are models, and, uh, uh, there are models mm. and, and strategies mm. that the uh, uh, Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service, for in the course of time, will put it out November. there. Because, of course, those, those, those who, November. of course, to, to help shape uh, them in line, also equally position them mm. academically, finding other ways of getting them to do something. To also before they go to But the point is that it is better. Okay. It is better because anybody who thinks that this is not better, you should let his kids stay in, in, at, at home. Okay. And I, let I'm others grateful. go to school. I, I, that would be a good for the Richard, person. Richard, George, please, please come in. Uh, uh, right. I wish that we had more time to yes, really uh, digest so, it. Right. I, right. I, I am so devastated about the way we, our education is being treated by this government. 
you know, Richard can afford to stay because he, he can afford to put his child through British school or, 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 or the American system that's the right in the country. So he can, because he doesn't care about what happens to the ordinary uh, uh, are, you, are you sure? Yes, I am telling you because <laughs> Brett, I school in Ghana. Brett, he is, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about his kids. Okay. Brett, what this thing is being done? The experimentation with the lives of our people. And then they say what? Be, uh, as a, because they wanted, uh, they want to do uh, equity and social justice, like Kwame Nkrumah did. Then you know the MPP doesn't understand this thing completely. They've missed the road completely. Let, let, let's touch the basics. I am some, saying that some some I children will right. be home from yes, September. Yes, but how do we? You know how that do we help them? Last week we we did that. Yes. Last week we discussed that. Right. And I'm saying that look, at least even before you allow some to go and some to stay, there should be a program to cater for them. What is Richie telling you now? Richie is telling you how they are thinking of. No, it's not saying that we are thinking. a problem. No. That will be introduced. Tell us that. Oh, that's what, what, that will be put in Let it be lunch. Why are you... So, no, so, so no, there's, there's nothing no like that. in place now. No. There's a program in place. Have you place. seen a document? So, are the but children aware of what they are to do before they go to school? Tell us. You see, now... This is propaganda and lies. You know, they are destroying... You know, they are destroying the lives of children on this. Destroying people's lives. And I'm all you that these people in the house on the that. street selling dog chains. They are, they are that's sexual education. You see, you see, somebody you see, put, somebody's putting them see, in school. And we are, are going to China. We are going to China, mm. eh? and we are saying that we are going to emulate the the, the, the development. The US and Australia. Go to China and see if you don't have the dog chain Double boy track boy. system. Go, and go and see if you don't have. You see, we sit in Ghana and do education online. Education is not this. Education is not just education. Education is quality. We are having quality. Education is important. Stop this, George. Give me. 10 seconds. Richard, he's only asking that. Is Please. there a program for those who go to school in November? Is there a program? Of course, there's a, there's a, a, a plan in so place. There'll there be, there be lunch, there'll be lunch in, in due course well, for in everybody due course. to know. We'll we'll so, so the program, we'll so, so the program, program is place. yet to be launched. There'll be lunch and you, you all have access to all those things. And you know what, Richard, you know what the program entails? Of course, I know a couple of things that goes into Vacation class. Of course. Uh, vacation classes and other, uh, you know, the distant learning thing that was done over the period during the era of President Kufo. All these things are being. Distant learning what? Distant of, learning what? Of course, okay. where you, we have the, 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 the right. TV uh, electric tutorage. Remember, uh, remember that you remember could have some, all those things. There are uh, various models that all these things will be launching. Stop deceiving Ghanaians. Please, let's face what the reality. We have failed. You, you didn't have, we have, have failed. failed. Let's, let's go back you to the first to education. That's what we are looking at. Let's help you. Let people who are learning be against you. Let's help 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 you. No, no, and I don't want to go to the school. The Ghanaian farmer. Free asset to education. The ordinary person. The farmer who, if I didn't do that before, they wouldn't have gotten asset to education. Your children are in British school. Your children are in American school. Gentlemen, I am grateful. I am so grateful for your time with me. Richard Asante Eboa is government spokesperson on social infrastructure. George Low, a former MP, a member of the NDC. Uh, grateful for your time with us this morning. Stay with us. There's more coming up brother, on the show. Good morning, morning once again. <laughs>well well well so glow always has something interesting for us they just finished mega music but they're hitting us hard with another one laughter fist they're asking all Ghanaians to come out and laugh it's for free they're just giving you fun 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 why not go but let's listen to exactly what they plan for you and what they plan to do with us on that day i have mr carter caesar he's the head of retail sales in accra for glow mobile and also chemical a comedian who will be performing at laughter fest good morning gentlemen good morning. Good, morning. good morning so glow doesn't seem to stop because since all guess up till now you've been hitting us hard with yes, fun fun yes, fun but yes. tell us about how the mega music went well the mega music was great i mean we we had all those stars on display they came to perform right. i mean it was fantastic um the video was super the mm. video closed the night and before the video uh our own sarkodier hit the house and it was crazy i mean he rocked the place nice. kwam eugene was nice and Papa Pizzi opened the night. So you can just imagine. Mr. Carter, you were there boogieing. I'm hey, sure. I, was, I was there, just in front. I was in front of the stage. Right. And yes. you must have had fun. But yes, anyway, a lot of it. tell us also about Glow Laughter Fest. It's in town again. You're doing it for the yes, second yes, time. Yes, yes. Tell us what it entails and why you're even doing it. Okay, so we're doing it again. Um, just like we said, I was here. I told you that it was a festival right. and we're doing something for last month, mm -hmm. which we did on the 12th of August, okay. followed up with Mega Music. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday, on the 9th of um, 
of September, which right. is this Sunday mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. We are at it again, mm. and it's another laughter fest. And we have the array of um, top notch comedians coming under one roof all over again. And it's it is one we didn't wait for a popular request, but mm. it had all been planned out. Right. And so he's here, he's going to be part of it. Okay. We're going to have all the other comedians also coming. Mm. DKB is going to be there, Basket Mouth, Senator. Uh, Dan the Humorous, all the guys, they are all wow. going to come together yeah. all over again and hit it. Wow. Chemical, yeah. let me come to you because yeah. you're a part of all the comedians yeah, 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 who yeah, be yeah, there. Yeah, How does course. it feel to be part of the Glow family and to have this entertainment for well, your viewers? Uh, I feel rich. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, getting on a platform like the Glow Laughter Fest uh, stage is big. It's been in Nigeria for a while and this is the first time uh it, it's come to ghana so i'm part of this history right. and um yeah so like i said i feel rich i feel honored i feel very happy considering the fact that i'm also a mega comedian in ghana so it's going to be blast i'm going to pre uh, present mega jokes on the day so nice. yeah i mean performing alongside basketball yeah i mean before i started doing comedy he was doing it already right. and so i mean there's a lot to learn there's a lot to uh show out there mm -hmm. And so people should just come and then have fun. It's going to be rip cracking. I, I hope to see you there. I will. Yeah, I mean. I certainly it, will pass through. Definitely. But let should. me come back to you, Mr. Carter Caesar. Okay. How can a Glow subscriber attend the show? Okay, so if you're a Glow subscriber, all the qualification is still the same. Okay. All you need to do, in fact, people have already qualified for this show. Right. All you need to do is to use your data or you make voice calls. Okay. So you load 20 Ghana CDs of um, airtime and then you make voice calls mm -hmm. and we're going to call you um, and send you messages that mm -hmm. you've qualified right. or if you use both voice and data continue using it so for 30 ghana cities for voice and data okay. once you use it up we're going to call you and then we would also send you a message mm -hmm. or you can even walk to our glow world shops and then buy a sim card all you need to do is to buy a sim card mm -hmm. now we even have tickets in other locations as well right. so you need to buy a sim card preloaded with data mm. so for 30 ghana cities you're going to have 3.2 gig of data mm. so walk to these points talking about 37 max mats mm -hmm. talking about um accra mall silver bed at accra mall mm. silver bed at west hills mall right. junction mall mm -hmm. and also bachona total right. and then also airport shell okay. now there's also the shop smice shop at the arrival hall at the mm. Kotoka International Airport. So tell your family and friends <laughs> for this weekend, as once they, they drop into down. town, they should just get um, a SIM. Mm -hmm. And once you get a SIM, you get your tickets, and so you qualify. So that's it. Now, the good thing is some people also want the VIP treat. Right. I'm sure some people have already experienced exactly. it the last time. So all you need to do is to buy a Glow MiFi. And these Glow MiFi's are only sold in our Glow World shop. Right. So for 261 Ghana CDs, you grab a Glow MiFi, you get 30 gig of data on it, mm -hmm. and then you, you, you can enter and then you, 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 you'll be treated as a VIP mm -hmm. with all the goodies that comes with the VIP. So we're doing all this free again for Ghanaians, so to speak. Nice. So where exactly, when you talk about Glow World, many okay. people don't seem to know exactly where it's okay, located. Okay, very well. So, so good, you can good, use good. this opportunity. So our Glow Shops, Glow World, that's, how we, that's what we call our Glow Shops. Okay. So right behind us on the Ring Road, okay. just in between Carl Bank and Echo Bank, there's one shop there. Right. Now if you go to Osu Makofi House, mm. we have a Glow World shop okay. next to, uh, next to uh, just around Papaya opposite okay. uh, Carl Bank. Mm. That's Makofi House. And so there's a Glow World there. Then we have also one in Tema community one okay. where the banks are the bank mm. enclave in community one there's also a glow workshop and you can you can also grab one there so all these and then there's also east legon american house okay. uh, dropping down towards american house mm. on the left there's mm. also a glow workshop mm. there so these are the our outlets in accra and you can grab a vip Ticket. Very well. Are there other shows to come from Glow? Yes, yes, yes. There are more shows. We're going to have the Mega Fest again, mm. uh, music, the Mega Music again okay. this month on the 22nd of September okay. this month. And it's going to be mega. I mean, it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be great. The other one was phenomenal. Mm. You can imagine what is going to happen at this time, right? Very well. And then, let me add, then 22nd will be the combo. 
So when you put mega music and, and then laughter, laughter fest. fest together on October 22nd. That's going to be fire. So, so after Sunday, there are going to be two more shows. Nice. But Chemical, you're a comedian, so of course you have to use your talent here. So give us a little of what oh, you be wow. doing, just a, a bit of it, a taste of it, so people will know why they have to come oh, on wow. Sunday. Oh, wow. You just put me on yes, the spot. Yes, that's the whole point. On that day, you'll still be on the spot, won't you? Okay, so... Um, <laughs> I mean, because TV3 was doing some politics this uh, morning. morning, let me also do something political. You know, you remember uh, those Guantanamo Bay detainees mm -hmm. brought to Ghana? You know they are still in the country, they right? They are. Yeah, the funny thing is when they were brought to the country, Ghanaians were making a fuss around thinking we Ghanaians could be influenced to become suicide bombers mm -hmm. or terrorists. Mm -hmm. But that's not possible. Ghanaians can never be suicide bombers or terrorists. Because really? to be a suicide bomber, you have to follow one rule. You have to be on time. <laughs> Ghanaians are always late. So this oh, is just, then maybe this is, I can be because I'm always on time. I yeah, can so be. this is just a tip mm. of uh, what I'm going So right. if you want the full thing, just come on the day and then exactly. experience the that whole... That was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> can I attend the remaining shows? Yes, why not? Once you qualified, because once you qualify, you get mm. to go to all the two shows within right. the month. Okay. Because you qualify within the month. So I can see people qualifying now and then also having to go for all the, the two shows as well. Mm. So that's, that's what we're giving to Ghanaians. So what has GLOW promised us in the years coming ahead? So in the years coming, GLOW is going to promise you, and that's mm. what is important to our subscribers, mm. better service experience. Right. And we're doing this better service experience through improvements in our service delivery, improvements in our network and all that. And also, we're also entertaining our customers, and we're coming out with new products. We have an unlimited offer which we are hitting the market with is already is already on board we're mm. selling it it's a very big offer mm. you know we have this um this offer uh, on the table already our it, uh, you pay 80 ghana cities and you have 30 gig right. and i will come up with an unlimited mm. offer so we are doing all this and because we are the grandmasters of data we're going to finish everybody with serious data Very in this well. market. So Ghanaians should get ready for us. Anyway, so all roads will lead to Fantasy Dome on Sunday. Make sure you are there to watch Chemical give you more of his jokes and there'll be so many other talented African comedians. Let's all go out there and support our own. They're giving it out for virtually free. So make sure you join this bandwagon from GLOW. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more here. But I was joined by Mr. Carter Caesar, Head of Retail Sales at Cry GLOW Mobile and Chemical the Comedian who'll be performing on Sunday is laughter fest. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more. Stay here. So September is the month for childhood cancer awareness. And as most of you know, you may know a child out there who has some malignancy or some cancer as we all know it to be. It's a very sad situation, the fact that most children die out of these cancers because parents do not report to the hospitals early. And so in creating awareness, we want to delve more, talk about it, find out what the signs and symptoms are and see if you can be of help to any child in your neighborhood. I have Dr. Emanuela Amwako, she's a pediatrician, special, I mean, she's a resident pediatrician and also Laurentia Owusu Osei Tutu. She's a nurse, child oncology ward, all at Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start off with what people often are confused about. I have a child. How do I identify that she has a tumor or a cancer or a malignancy? Okay. Um, so childhood cancers can present like any other disease. Uh, most of the children we see at our department uh, present with maybe fevers. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be a lump, a new squint, uh, a new um, uh, spot in the eye, okay. swelling of the eye. You notice swelling of the jaw or some lymph nodes in the neck, so neck swellings. Uh, you have a child, you have never noticed a stomach and abdominal mass, mm. and then all of a sudden you're bathing this child and you see, you feel a mass in the abdomen. This could be signs of uh, cancer. Persistent fever, you've been to the hospital over and over again. Yeah, treating treated malaria, malaria over and over <laughs> you <know>? again. <laughs> you've treated malaria over and over again, and this is not uh, getting better. You notice that your child is looking pale every day, getting weak, complaining of body, pains you've been through every medication but this child is persistently sick yeah. then you have to think of childhood cancer you need to visit a hospital and make sure um, a right diagnosis is given so okay now I hear you I've been able to identify that something is wrong with my child when I get to the hospital what am I expecting okay 
Um, so when a child presents, especially when you present to a pediatrician, because mm -hmm. most of our pediatricians are trained to pick up the signs, nice. uh, when you present, lab tests are going to be done, depending on what cancer it is. If it's a new uh, squint in the eye or swelling eye, then maybe it could be cancer of the eye. So um, um, lab tests are going to be done. You might be asked to do imaging, what mm -hmm. we call CT scan, mm -hmm. uh, to assess how far this tumor has gone. and then. Um, when all of this is done, treatment uh, can commence depending on what stage the cancer mm. is and what is supposed to be done for the child. I'm sure many mothers are worried, could it have been me? Did I do anything? Or is it the father? Is it the food I'm giving? What kind of advice should you give them when they come into contact with you, Laurentia? So shadow cancer can affect anybody at any time, depending on whoever you are, being mm. rich or poor. Right. It could be anybody. And... As at now, research has been done, but then there hasn't been anything like specific that this is the cause. Mm. We only know of the predisposing factors, which we can't even say, because a lot of mothers mm. are predisposed to the same things, but it's not everybody that gets right. it. So it's not something we can say you did this or that, that you got it. Mm. And childhood cancer is not anything spiritual. Mm. It's not a case. It's, it's nothing. It's just something that happens to anybody. It mm. could be the rich. It could be the poor. It could be the middle income, income class, and right. like anybody at all right. from any part of Ghana, mm. from the north to the south, from east to west, any part at all. Like childhood cancer is there. Mm. It happens to anybody. So it's nothing you do wrong or right that gets you childhood cancer right. or, ch or get your child mm. that's into that situation. Right. It's just something that happens, happens. to anybody. Right. Dr. Marco, let me come back to you because people are concerned that is this something that's so common that we should be talking about or we're just, you know, making something bigger than it's supposed to be? Um, so uh, the disease burden in, the, uh, in recent years uh, uh, has really come up. Okay. So in worldwide, one, um, one in uh, 500 children get okay. cancer by their 15th birthday. Yeah. So looking at uh, Ghana's data, we have 24 million people. Mm -hmm. That would mean that about 500 children would get, uh, about a thousand children yeah. actually will get cancer at the end of each year by their 15th birthday. Yes. And unfortunately, uh, um, Kolebu and Kumasi Konfanochi are the only uh, two centers that see. And then we see about 300 children. That's only 30% of the children wow. who might actually have cancer that presents to the hospital. And trust me, out of this 30% that present, most of them do present late. Mm. Yes. That's rather unfortunate. I mean, just hearing the statistics sends shivers through my spine. But the problem also is many people would... I'm happy Laurentia mentioned it's attributed to spiritual causes and we'll send these children out there. By the time they come to the hospital, it's rather late. So how do you deal with parents who are going through whatever frustrations they're going through because they came too late? How do you manage them? What are you able to tell them? Okay, so first of all, you have to encourage them, like mm. thank them for actually coming to the hospital. Most of the times it's our spiritual beliefs, it's our traditional beliefs that um, when a child has a mass, it's something spiritual, you notice a swelling on the eye, oh, maybe someone has cursed this child, okay? So it's mostly not the parents' fault. Mm. Sometimes they might actually have presented to a hospital, but not uh, every hospital or not every doctor in Ghana um, is equipped with knowing signs of childhood right. cancers. Uh, diagnosis can be missed all the time mm -hmm. and it's not the fault of the doctors because mm -hmm. I mean, we are used to the infectious diseases and we are now seeing an uprise in childhood cancer. So we thank them for bringing the child to the hospital when we hope, hope, hope that they are not mm -hmm. so late. Uh, and even when they are late, there's always something that can be done. Right. The good thing about childhood cancers is that in the recent years, uh, survival rates have gone as high as 90%. 90% nice. is a good number in it medicine. Is. Yeah. It Even does. if it's 1%, it's <laughs> good when it, it, there's an increase. But anyway, let's also talk about the launch because we've done so much to get this far. And I'm sure you want to showcase something out there to the world that we're doing something about childhood cancers. What's happening on Sunday? Um, Sunday, we are launching Lifeline for Childhood Cancers Ghana. Okay. Uh, it's a foundation that hopes to reach out to every child, no matter where you're from. Most of our patients that abandon treatment uh, abandon it because of no money. Mm. So we, we are trying to uh, launch this foundation to be able to support financially and emotionally a lot of uh, mothers or parents that present to the ward, maybe single parents mm -hmm. or um, there's very difficult um, psychosocial support that mm. comes from home. Mm. I mean, once a child has cancer, everyone's like, 
this mm -hmm. person has been cursed, right? Uh, so we, this foundation would be out there to help support financially and emotionally and try and create awareness and help in the training of people that can recognize childhood cancers. Yeah. Very well. Finally, let me ask you, Laurentia, how has your interaction with the children who have cancers in the oncology ward been like? Um, they, they have a longer stay on the ward. But some of become family. Right. They go and come, unlike the other was or even a theater, a patient come lie on the theater table and goes away. With childhood cancer, you can have a child stay with you for like years, mm -hmm. two, three years, and you have no choice than to be friends with them. Mm -hmm. And in my world, one, one good thing is doctors, nurses, or at least anybody at all, we treat our kids as part of us. Mm -hmm. We have contacts of the mothers, we have contacts of their parents or relatives, and then we do interact with them very well, mm -hmm. very, very well. Children see you outside, call mm -hmm. you, and then you meet them, they, they greet you, they tell you their problems. Sometimes they even go beyond their sickness and then talk to you about their family, family issues. issues and all that. Yeah. So it's really good, like our interaction with them is very mm -hmm. good, like, yeah. And you certainly, I mean, I hope that what Laurentia has told you will help you know that childhood cancers, even though it's a bad disease, when it comes, you've got a whole family behind you supporting. Because I worked at oncology unit at some point, and it was fun to know that whenever the children came, they didn't even want to go home. I mean, they say the toys, the party sometimes would have for them. And I think that's encouraging because oftentimes there's that notion that for a children's cancer ward is scary, and when you go, you won't come back home. So I would really want us to push that good part as well. And th there are other times our, our kids mm. are sent to surgery yeah. or at times they come in and they have to be go um, treated at an emergency. Right. They request they want to be on their own because they are not comfortable yes. at any other place but our world. Yes, nice. So, I mean, it. kudos to the team. I think you're doing very well. We'd like to also encourage mothers, fathers, families out there that the fact that your child has some signs and symptoms of cancer doesn't mean it's an automatic death sentence. As you heard, there has been an improvement in the survival rate up to 90%. So, if you go early, there is hope for you. So, let's all push that agenda. And I have been speaking to Dr. Emanuela Amuakun. She's a pediatrician resident and also Laurentia Obusu Osei Tutu Nurse at the Chad Oncology Ward and on Sunday they are launching the Lifeline on for, is child it for Childhood Cancers. So, so let's make sure we're all there to support them. It will be at the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. Okay, what time is it? At 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Everyone, everyone very well. Invited. Everyone but likes come freebies. With, come with a heavy pocket <laughs> because we are raising funds for the children. We certainly <laughs> will. I'd like to say thank you to you too and all the best as we go out there. It's Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, so make sure you're spreading the word out there. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more here on New Day. And I'm told the entire production team say they dedicate this song to me uh, on my glorious birthday. I shared this day, uh, I'm told, with Benny Blanco, uh, an actor and television personality. Also with you, Benedicta Ophabia uh, Afua, if it's your birthday as well today, enjoy it. I've been joined by a man who's a former member of parliament for Cape Coast South. He Hi, hopes... He is still a member of Parliament of Cape Coast South, forgive me, and he wants to be president. Kwekuri Kesega, Chief, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. You look good. Pleasure. How's the campaign going? Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad. Yes. So far, so Not good? Bad. So far, so good, yes. What's the response been? Well, it's been, it's been good. Mm. There is a silent majority, majority, majority out there right. who um, are not being heard, mm. and uh, we are make, trying to make sure they are heard. The last time we heard about silent majority was when the NDC was telling the MPP there was a silent majority in 2016, and they lost, woefully. Do you stick by the silent majority tag? That well, you want to there push? is a, always a silent majority. Whether they win or lose is also a different thing. It's like parliament. Is, you have is a, yours losing or winning? Um, I hope we win. I hope that we we'll win the argument. I hope that people will see will see some reasoning in what we are trying to say. Mm. I hope that people are not going to be thinking about their selfish interests. Mm. And for that matter, throw out every reasoning out of the window. Mm. There are things that need to be fixed, and we need to fix them. Okay. We can't bury our head in the sand and think that when we take it out, mm. our problems will go away. Let's look at your party, for example. Mm. They, after the uh, 2016 election loss, there's a Kwesi Boche committee. Mm -hmm. The report came out. It made some recommendations, out of which the party has reorganized, re-registered. Um, they've been the uh, well, unity walks, and then what? Well, it, it, it continues. Is that it's enough? Not, it's not, no, it's not an event. Mm. You know, it's basically uh, a number of things that we need to be doing right until the day of the 20. 
you know, 20 election. Mm. So it's not just one. What do you propose one, one the party time. does? Well, we, we do what we are doing at the moment in terms of conducting all the necessary elections to make sure that mm. we have the new leadership or whoever emerges as the new leader. We, we've been doing this from branch, constituency, right. mm. region. We've mm. completed just over the weekend. Mm. We are now going to the national, okay. and then hopefully the flag bearership then will follow. Once we finish with that, mm. then we have a leader. It is easier to form policies or whatever we are going to do in 2020 mm. around a leader. Many a times I hear they say, oh, if the um, party is, 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 is healed, mm. it doesn't matter who you put on top. Okay. And then the party will win an election. You don't share that opinion? Do <laughs> I don't share that opinion. What opinion I mean, do you share? Well, you need um, the party to be strong mm. and you need a leader who is also strong, okay. who has a vision. Mm. The leader must have a vision. The leader must have policies that will be shaped by the rest of the party. Mm. The leader must believe in the principles and values of the party right. that, that, that he or she mm. is, is leading. Mm. So it's not just a matter of put the machinery or get the car ready mm. and put a driver in it and the car but, will but drive. But all, all of you candidates who have come up, uh, from President John Mahama to Professor Labi to mm. uh, Sylvester Mensah to your good self to uh, Alban Bagbin to others who will come, you all believe in the principles of the party, don't you? Well, we believe in the principles of a party. What I am saying is that we derailed of those principles and values, and mm. we need to get back on track. You served under President Mahama. You saw him I derail. Did. You didn't tell him. Well, I mean, I don't want to be sitting here talking about what I told President Mahama or did not tell him or what I told him. But you, people will blame you. Well, as for the blame, you cannot run away from it. Mm. You served in the government, and you must take your share of the responsibility. That is not to say that, again, we should... Sit in if, the corner. if he derailed and you were in the team that helped him to derail, so to speak, for, for want of a better expression, do you think you deserve a chance to lead? Because people will say, then you were, you're coming to well, derail. Well, if that is the argument, then nobody in the NDC deserves a chance. Mm. <laughs> because we as a party collectively derailed. So if you are saying that I was part of the team that derailed, then who in the team mm. qualifies to run as a, as a candidate you for the party? You tell me. Well... Well, we does that all make you a better qualified candidate? Well, because I have a better program. I have a better vision. What is your vision? Well, my vision is to make sure that we get a Ghana that is better than we have today. Okay. We stop experimenting with our education system okay. and create a system mm. that is sustainable, that is going to give our children a better chance in the global world that we live in. Okay. Not experimenting with whether it should be three years or four years or mm. whether it should be track system or it should be shift system and mm. all that which we've been experimenting for some time You're now. You're not happy and with what the government is doing. Well, it, I mean, it's, it, does, does this look like something that is going to work for you? We live in mm. a competitive world. Mm. We live in a global world. You need to run a system that is in consonant with what is happening in the rest of the world. Mm. You cannot educate your children in isolation to have certain qualifications in a system mm. that cannot hold water in, a, in any international competition. The, and the, I believe that the system we are going on at the mm. moment we are just heading mm. towards a disaster. The Deputy Minister for Education, Dr. Duchum, thinks otherwise. See, he's been an educationist, and he says, look, he's bringing that experience to bear on this one. Well, you still stand by your Well, argument. you don't need an educationist to tell you that the system that is being put in place at the moment is going to end up just being abysmal. I mean, it is clear. You can see it. Mm. The kind of track. I mean, when I think of the track system they are talking about, it looks like the British, the British train system, mm. where you have different colors, of, of, of trains running. Okay. You need a better education system. Look, a lot of uh, the things that, oh, a, a lot of a system that we had in mm -hmm. the past mm -hmm. was not actually mm -hmm. a bad system. Mm. But over the years, we have not been able to sustain this system going forward and deal with the growth that eventually will happen. Mm. The population of Ghana today is not going to be the population in 20 years' time. Therefore, our education, our um, getting jobs for our people mm -hmm. and pretty much every facet of the economy okay. should be planned in such a way mm -hmm. that we'll be able to accommodate the population growth and the changes that will happen in the future. That's, that's one of your visions. What's the yes. other? Give me top well, three. Give me two more. Well, the other is health. Okay. We need a sustainable health system, a system that is based on, on your clinical need, mm -hmm. not your, on your ability to pay. You, your, your government promised a one-time premium. It never happened. It never saw the light of day for eight years. Well, Why should we trust you I to was give not, us a vision? To be, to be honest with mm -hmm. you, 
you know, as somebody who has worked as a, a, a fund manager and as a banker in the past, mm. I was not really convinced that, you know, a one premium thing will, you will, didn't will, speak will up. work out. You didn't speak up well, when it was said. I, I did. In fact, when that thing came up, I wasn't even in government. I mm. mean, <laughs> I, I didn't serve in a... This started right, right. in the Moses government. Exactly. I was not even in politics. But you didn't speak up. I it did. was your party. I did talk about what, it. What, then what was the response? You well, didn't press on. When you are in government, mm. okay, depending on which position you occupy, you and, and, and you can be... I wasn't a cabinet minister to start off with, right. even though I ended up being a regional minister. Mm. You can, if you're a deputy minister, you can give your ideas, you know, to your minister, who is the immediate person that you see on a day-to-day -day right. basis. Occasionally, you may have access to the president mm. and you share your views with the president. Okay. When you become a regional minister, yes, maybe you get much closer mm. to the president. You're still not a cabinet minister. Okay. You show your ideas. Right. At the end of the day, decisions are taken collectively. Mm. And the buck stops with the president, who will finally say that, okay, based on this collective mm. decision, this is what we are going to do. If we all decide that this is what we are going to do, you cannot say that this is not what did, I believe. Did President Mills fail in, in that agenda? Well... As you said, it never saw the, you know, the, the, so the light of So that's a failure? Play. Is that what you're saying? It didn't happen, but I didn't think that one, um, just one payment or one premium will be able to fix our health problem Did going forward. Did he fail? Did President I, I have in his quest to make a one-term one -term premium? Did it, he fail? it didn't happen, so you cannot talk about it as a success. It just didn't happen in the first place. Okay. What I, I'm saying is that I have a different view mm. and I have a different plan on how I can sustain the health system hmm. and make it a What's better system. What's your plan? Let me that, hear this plan. That, that we have today. There's not going to be this, you know, one one of payment, you know, in the as as it has been suggested. Hmm. There should be some contribution coming from those who can afford to pay. Okay. 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 And those who cannot afford to pay hmm. should not be penalized when they are when they are they are ill okay. because they don't have the ability to pay. Right. Nobody should be lying in the hospital waiting for a relative to go and bring money mm. before they perform an operation on them. That mm. is what I say to you, that the system that I intend to build mm. will be based on people's clinical need, right. not on their ability to pay. The Finance Committee of Parliament uh, sits in camera uh, yeah. to delve into the issues of the collapsed banks. You worked at the Ministry of Finance. Mm. Um, what do you make? I mean, Parliament sitting in camera for a matter as sensitive as this mm. that impacts so many lives, like jobs have been lost. What do you yeah. think? I mean, I, I, um, you know, I, I believe that my, my, my colleagues of parliament, you know, took mm. this decision based on, you know, what, what you know, I I'm not privy to the inf information as to... Do you think parliament should sit in camera? When their bribery allegations came up, they, they did it publicly? Well, there are other I things can that tell you my opinion, frankly. What is, is your opinion? My opinion is that I, I disagree. That they I should sit in camera? I, I, I believe that this, this should be made available to the public. Okay. At the end of the day, it's the taxpayers' money mm. that is used in bailing these banks out. So why can't we hear them to tell us why they messed up our banks and mm. all that for us, mm. and which we are paying for? We are entitled to know. Mm. I mean, the parliament is not, it's not a court. Right. It's just for information gathering for decision making. Mm. And I think the public should be in on this. But I'm sure that there's some wisdom that went into this. As I said, I mm. need to speak to my colleagues I, I have not been... The, know, the regional allowed. elections are over. Yeah. Now we're going for the, the national elections. Yeah. What trend did you see in the regional elections? Well, it, it, it clearly, you know, tells us that, you know, people want to change. People believe that those who were in those positions, you know, have more or less served their purpose mm. in terms of being able to do what did they Did the previous do. executive fail the party? Well, we all failed. Mm. And that is why we've gone back but to the drawing board. But there were people who were leading. Did they fail? Well, obviously, the box, as they say, I think Truman or something, who said that the box stops with... Should with I see Drink Etia go? Well, Kofi Adam, should he go? I am not to make that... Anita De Soso, should he go? If you get well, into the ballot box, would you take that decision? Well, my single vote may or may not make a difference. But at the end of the day, the people will speak. Mm. Just as they've spoken at the branch election, constituency election, regional election, mm. they surely will speak... In the national what election. are your chances so against uh, Spio Gabra, Joshua Labi, John Mahama, Alban Bagman? What are your chances against them? Sure. You know, they are all, uh, everybody is beatable. Okay. Okay? Everybody is beatable. The most important thing, when people talk about experience or talk about heavyweight mm. names and all that, for me, those things don't mean much. It's the most important to look. We have had leaders in this country who were young. Okay. 
and people have seen them to be disastrous. Mm. We have had leaders in this country who are old. Mm. We have one in office at the moment. Again, people have seen them to be disastrous. We have people Do who you are, find the president disastrous? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, what is going on in this country? Does it look like a pretty country to you? Mm. I mean, what is working here in this country? They are not sure what they are doing. They talk about free education. They are making a mess of it. Mm. You know, they talk about uh, one district, one factory. And what is the sense in that? Mm. Why would anyone want to build a, a, a factory in each district? Mm. Does it make sense? Factories are built based on what we want to do. Ghana should become a manufacturing Advise economy. the president. What, do you, what, what would you tell Well, him? my advice to the president is that, yes, Ghana needs to become a manufacturing economy. Ghana needs to val add value to the commodities that we are endowed with or what we grow here. And factories should be built near where these raw materials are okay. where we can uh, you know abundantly get them right it doesn't need to be in every district mm. and there's nothing wrong with somebody moving from one district to other to work uh, about what will you be producing uh, you have not told me what your chances are are you winning are you losing well we go into an election to win as i said by what margin well i cannot give you margins here I'm, you see you have not done your projections uh, no it's not important for you to sit down and, and, and self-glorify yourself that I'm going to this election The others are green. doing it. Why I can't you do well, it? Well, I don't believe in that. Okay. So, I mean, they're entitled to what they want. If they can say they will win by 80% or 90%, they say the sweetness of the pudding is always in the eating. Now, my final question to you. Your former boss, uh, Mr. Setek, I spoke with him last week. Yeah. He says on the collapse of the banks, uh, he takes responsibility, the party takes responsibility, but can't be blamed. Do you share in his opinion? I don't. Why? I don't. Because I, I don't actually think that the NDC government did anything. Don't forget that the central bank is Were independent. Were you responsible? No. Were you blame, are you blamable? The, the central bank is independent. Okay. It doesn't matter which appointed the governor of the bank or the personalities who work there. It is supposed to be an independent, take independent But, but, but in an election year, you went on, for a levy to on, salvage jobs. In what? an election year, yeah. you went for a levy to salvage jobs on the same particular matter. So, do you take responsibility? Well, do you take they, the blame they, they, like your boss? No, no, you are looking at two different. You are looking at two different things. You see, all these things like Osla and all those things that we were trying to do, okay. which got completed by these people. Mm. Part of it was to actually to be able to make these banks who had lent money to these institutions mm. to be liquid again. So that they don't find themselves in the situation that we are in. So something was done about it. What these guys did is to sit down and actually watch these banks collapse. Because it is a failure of the central bank. And we must put where the blame where the blame so is. So while your boss feels responsible, you, you don't feel responsible about it. Well, I, I, I haven't listened to my, 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 my former boss. Okay. So I don't know exactly in which context he was I asked him saying. that, look, the collapse of these five banks... Some of the investigation was done under him. The rot was found out by him. And I asked him, does he take the blame? Some say he's blamable. He says, feels responsible, but he won't take the blame. Well, I'm I, asking, I, do you stand I, with I, him? I, I do you stand that, with him? I think that, obviously, by being part of a, a government and being the finance minister, he felt that, you know, from, do a, you feel same? For, from a fiscal standpoint, because you've got to look at it. Do you feel same? I don't feel same. Yeah. Because the issues are fiscal and monetary issues. I thank you very much. The fiscal is the is the government mm. and the monetary is the central bank. Okay. The central bank failed awfully okay. in their responsibility, basically in, in issuing license, mm. in policing, and in providing an oversight. And it was under your watch. Well, not all of it happened on our watch. The money that was given to Beige and others were not given to the NDC. I thank government. you very much. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best. Oh! <laughs> Rich catcher, rich catcher, rich catcher.